Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. So I haven't done a rant video in a while, and I'm going to do a rant video. And this one is about the beauty of true live music. You just don't see it very often anymore. And it's a shame. And it kind of made me sad and made me think about it in this theme. So last night, I went to a free concert. I don't know if you could see that screen. Uh, I live here on Long Island. Didn't even know about it until the last minute. But it turned out that uh, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, forget about the uh, lousy artwork there, but what can I tell you? They were playing for free at Eisenhower Park, which uh, I live pretty close by. And in fact, they were playing with the opening band was Antigone Rising. Now, if you're a fan of my channel, you know I'm a big a fan of Antigone Rising. I am always talking about them, and uh, they deserve to be so much bigger. So me and my wife, we went immediately from work, got there right when Antigone Rising was going on stage. Perfect timing. Uh, Antigone Rising played for about 45 minutes. Uh, it is a crime to me how they are not a huge band. Um, they are. This is the second incarnation of Antigone Rising. So the first incarnation was a very different band, uh, which was... They released a couple of records. This was a great, great album. One of my favorites called From the Ground Up. And that was uh, Cassidy's era. Cassidy left, and then they became this Antigone Rising. And that was with Nene Camp's uh, lead vocals and rhythm guitar. Wrote a lot of the songs. And they still have Kathy Henderson on lead guitar. She's got balls. I mean, she... Sorry, not that she has balls, but she, she plays lead guitar with balls. Terrific player. You know what I mean there, uh, Kathy. That's a compliment. And uh, Kristen Henderson played bass guitar. They used to have a drummer as, as well. I think they're down to a threesome now, which we'll talk about. But anyway, they released this album, 23 Red, which I love. Fantastic record. And then uh, they kind of released these shorter, kind of like almost like EPs, uh, Whiskey and Wine, two different versions of that. You can see they autographed them for me when I bought them. Uh, they're all terrific and then this was their newest release called true joy and they were down to a threesome on this nini camps uh kathy henderson and the sister kristen henderson uh lead guitar and drums and bass kristen so last night when i saw them live couldn't help but notice that kristen henderson was playing the drums and they had a male bass player shocking for antigone rising an all-female band uh, they sound great. Uh, they are. There's no reason why they're not huge. They're like a country rock band now. Very different than the original Antigone Rising. But the songs are catchy as hell. Stick in your head. Melodic. Great. Uh, not wimpy. They're a, just a great band. And it breaks my heart that they're not huge. So uh, I'm in your side there, Antigone Rising. They play about 45 minutes. Great set. And then South Eye Johnny came out. And I'm a fan of Southside, not a huge fan, but I'm a fan. And these are the three albums I have from him. I love this uh, studio record, Better Days. This is a great Latter Day one, although it's old by now. The classic live one, Reach Up and Touch uh, the Sky. And then uh, the best of Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, which is uh, something everybody should have. They played for almost two hours. Now, Southside Johnny is getting up there. He's actually a year older than Springsteen and two years older than Miami Steve Van Zandt, little Steven. They all come from the same area, that Asbury Park area, and it's a very incestuous relationship because they were both starting around the same time. And, uh, you know, they all, the guys in the East Street Band were at some point in the, the Asbury Jukes. Um, and, of course, uh, Steve Van Zandt and uh, Bruce wrote a ton of Southside songs. I mean, there's albums where, like, Miami Steve wrote, like, eight out of the ten songs. And Springsteen's given away a bunch of great songs. You know, The Fever, of course, and uh, Trapped Again, Talk to Me. I mean, these are just amazing songs. And This Time Baby is Gone for Good, Steve Van Zandt, um, just a ton of stuff. So Southside's not a songwriter, um, you know, just a, a stylist, and he leads this big... Band. I don't want to go home to Steve Van Zandt song, incredible song, The Fever, did I mention that? So anyway, uh, they played last night for close to two hours. He's got a big band. I counted a change. Uh, eight guys on the stage and sometimes nine. He's got the full three-piece horn section. you got the trumpet, trombone, saxophone. 
gives this huge sound, amazing players. The drummer is phenomenal, bass player is phenomenal. Had a guitarist on there who looked like Dickie Betts, you know, had this really long hair with a cowboy hat on, didn't look like the rest of the band at all. But man, that guy can play. And of course, the Hammond B3 organ, um, I don't know who that was, but he was amazing. You gotta love that Hammond B3, adds so much sound. And it was a great set because like the first hour or 40 minutes, they're playing like songs that I didn't really know that well. Uh, and then like the last 45 minutes or so, boom, 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 you know, classic after classic and ended up with, um, you know, having a party and I don't want to go home and trapped again and talked to me. Just great. Just great. So here's the thing. Southside Johnny is getting old, right? I think he's going to be 75 and uh, his voice is not what it used to be. You know, it's not as bad as, not to pick on the guy because I'm a huge Tull fan, but it's not as bad as Ian Anderson, but he's struggling out there. But what he did was great. Yeah, he sang most of the stuff, but the keyboard player kind of had a voice that was reminiscent of Southside, but maybe when he was younger, a more powerful voice. So he would kick in the harmonies. Southside's still singing, but the keyboard player's kicking in the harmonies, and every once in a while they'd kind of do duet, you know, like a Mick and Keith kind of thing, when Mick and Keith would do it at a microphone. It was great, and it made me think, man, this is what live music is all about. It's not about being perfect. If I want to be perfect, I'll listen to the goddamn album. It's about live music. Unadulterated, no ba- no background tracks, no background vocalists that aren't there, no background musicians that aren't there and playing the tracks. And and it was great. And even though Southside can't sing so great, it doesn't matter because the passion is still there. And the guy's seventy, going to be 75 years old. When I was a kid, somebody 75 was either dead or in a wheelchair. And now there's still rock stars playing on a stage for an hour and a half to two hours. It's incredible. So you got to frame it in what it is. And it still worked really, really well. So my hat's off to Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, an amazing band, Antigone Rising. You deserve so much more. And the sadness of what's accepted in music today. You know, maybe it started in MTV with all that choreography with Janet Jackson and all that kind of stuff. It's just not my kind of music. But then it crossed over even back then to the award shows. And I remember watching at that time the Grammys and the Billboard Music Awards and all this kind of stuff. And it was all about this gigantic production and, and all the choreography, which is fine. But you, if it's a music award show, you should be playing live and singing live. It's in a music award show. It's not a fake thing. Would you go to a Broadway show and they give the Tony Award to an actor who is on the stage reciting the lines to a backing track so if he forgets the, the lines of dialogue, it shows up anyway? Does that make any kind of sense? And that's the music world we live in. And it went from pop music, and I guess because pop music was kind of accepted because, well, they're dancing and it's all about the show, and now it crossed over into legendary famous rock bands that have either gotten busted or are admitting that, yeah, you know, you play so much for tickets and and uh, they deserve a perfect show. So, yeah, the lead guitarist is really playing, but he's really playing to a tape of him really playing. So if he botches it up or he forgets it, it's still going to play and the audience is not going to know. And, of course, there's tons of background singers that are really not there. And... Um, I call that's all bullshit, man. It should never be allowed. It it should be against the law. You know, if you if you can't hack it anymore because of your age, then do what Southside did. You have a keyboard player who will really sing with you. So it's still really live. Then I remember seeing Fleetwood Mac, uh, you know, probably 10, 15 years ago. And if you looked really close behind Fleetwood Mac on a the stage, there was a whole other set of musicians behind behind there. There was like two other drummers because obviously Mick Fleetwood's a good drummer, but they needed a lot more. And then there was another keyboard player. And even as great a guitarist as Lizzie Buckingham is, there's only one guitarist, so they would need other guitarists. So there was all these other musicians back there. But I didn't have so much of a problem with that because at least they're still playing live, even though it's not really Fleetwood Mac. You know, they, they probably should have announced them. And I know a lot of bands do that. Uh, Moody Blues is another one. I remember seeing 
the Moody Blues and they had like a whole another drummer playing. That's fine. You know, you see Pink Floyd. Uh, there, was, there was always, uh, even like on the division, but there's always other drummers playing. That's fine, as long as it's real. And of course, they should acknowledge it. So uh, that is my rant. Uh, it's all about the live music. You know, I've seen the Rolling Stones a ton of times, starting in 1975. One of the best memories I have of seeing them live was in the 81 Tattoo Tour. I saw them three times, and at one of the shows, it was either at the Meadowlands or the Garden. They were playing the song Let It Bleed. They botched it so badly. They got so lost, they actually stopped playing the song, which as a musician, an amateur musician, rule number one, you never stop playing. Well, the Stones were like, fuck it. We messed this up. They stopped, and they started it all from the beginning again. And it was great. It was great that they're human. And that it's live music. And they messed up. So what? They went back into it. It's a lot better than playing the backing tapes. And if you mess up, it just keeps going because it's fake. So there's my rant. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to know your opinion. But, um, you know, like I said, it's one thing when pop music did it and rap. But when classic rock bands now, you don't even know if they're really playing. Mm -mm. I say no. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, by the way, please hit subscribe. Check out my other videos and let me know what you think. Have a great night. Have a good weekend. See you next time.